Hi friends, welcome to story time. Today, whoopsie, I hit my camera. Today's story time is all about glasses. Does anyone out there wear glasses? Anyone have a mom or dad who wears glasses or maybe a grandma or brother or sister or grandpa? Yeah, I've worn glasses since I was really young, probably like third grade is when I got my glasses for the first time. And it was kind of scary. And I remember some kids made fun of me, but I got used to it. And now I love glasses. I love to buy new glasses. You can see I like all kinds of cool and different glasses. And I think they're just really fun and awesome. And I, um, I think that if you have them, you should rock them because they're, they look so cool. You can get all different kinds. So I hope if you have glasses that you, um, enjoy them and know that you look awesome. And I'm going to read some stories about glasses because why not, right? Our first story is called Naughty Mabel Sees It All. Look at her. Did you guys ever have to go get an eye exam and they put you in front of this? funny contraption. All right. Let's see about Mabel. Okay. Hello, my little darlings. It's me again, Naughty Mabel. We had so much fun the first time. I thought a second date was worth a try. Oh, yes, there was another Mabel book, the first one. It all began a few days ago when things started to get a little strange around the house. For some odd reason, my doggy dish was filled with potpourri. It actually tasted better than my kibble, but my stomach didn't agree. However, it did improve my breath. Even my gas smelled a little better. Mmm, yes. Oh. Still the next day, I was not feeling only queasy. I was seeing two of everything. Two front doors, two mothers, two fathers. It was too, too much. And then I was watching Martha Stewart on television and I saw three of her making couscous, which made me faint. That's not good. No more potpourri for me. I was just about to say something to my parents when I all got the most exciting news. I've been invited to my first sleepover at Smarty Cat and Scaredy Cat's house. Oh. A sleepover, people? I mean, how adult, how divine. I'm a strong, independent girl. I was ready to venture out into the world and take a big bite out of it. Finally, I knew how rock stars must feel. How on earth does one choose what to bring? Easy, just take everything. My parents said it was only for one night and that I shouldn't get too excited. Please, have we met? It's like they don't know me at all. For the record, Smarty Cat and Scaredy Cat's mother is more than just a nice old lady who lives next door. Her name is Millicent Murgatroyd. As a young woman, she was an aviatrix, a pilot, a female pilot, who flies airplanes. Thank you, Google. A paleontologist digging up bones, we have a lot in common, and a university professor of history and anthropology. Smell her! One day, she found a large shoebox on her front doorstep, and inside there were two kittens. One very nervous, the other smart as a whip, and they grew up to be my BFFs. I got bored and dozed off. I didn't care about Betty. Oh, oh, we missed a page. I'm sorry. The evening went very well. It started that way anyway. Smarty and Scaredy and I were having a great time playing dress up. Oh my, look at all those different outfits. Oh, they really went to town there. Then we settled in to watch one of Millicent's old black and white movies. Not my idea of an exciting way to end the night, but what are you going to do? She's 70 and that's 490 in dog years. I got bored and dozed off. I didn't care about Betty Davis or why she had all that makeup on. Oh, my. My own snoring woke me up, and out of the corner of my 
eye, I spotted a mysterious shadow on the wall. I knew it. It was a little blurry because of the dark, but there was no getting around it. It was a monster. Monsters are a tricky and elusive bunch, and the room was crawling with them. I grabbed the nearest weapon I could and jumped into action. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mrs. Murgatroyd didn't seem to appreciate my heroic efforts. Maybe if she cleaned her house once in a while, it wouldn't be infested with monsters. But I decided this probably wasn't the best time to bring that up. Apparently, even my parents don't believe in monsters. Right, and there's no such thing as the Tooth Fairy or the Easter Bunny either, I guess. Some people just can't handle the truth. Anyway, they just called me naughty and they put me to bed. So demeaning, so confusing. I have lived many lives. Maybe next time I just let the monsters eat them. Maybe I just... Oh, but then I saw something. I knew it. The monsters followed me home to have their revenge. Isn't that just like monsters? They like to play with your head. But if I could catch one, I could prove I was right. And I love being right. So I called out, Hey! Monster, 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 come out, come out wherever you are. I could play their little game. And that's when I spotted one. It was huge. This monster needed to lay off the carbs. I decided I had to either attack it or wake up my parents with the good news. Attack! Can you believe it? My parents still couldn't see the monster. Oh. Mabel! Now, if you'll recall, this is where we began. I decided to turn myself in and get time off for good behavior. Only I couldn't figure out who to turn myself into. They seemed to be cloning. I had no idea which lucky couple were my real parents or what was happening. Fortunately, the smartest couple figured it out. Guess what? There were no monsters. I just needed glasses. Oh. Glasses for a dog? Who knew? They had to take me to an optimist, an optopopotopopotomist, a popolopotententomtentist, an ophthalmologist. Oh, you know, the eye doctor. I wasn't sure I liked the looks of the joint. The room positively reeked of regret. I swore I'd be good. I'd give up believing in monsters. I was cured. We could leave and get smoothies. Everyone looked, oh. Ah, oh, better. Oh, that explained a lot. Hmm, my bad. Glasses, it turns out, are very attractive, especially on me. They give me that serious, intellectual, uh -huh. I just finished writing my first novel, but I also love to party. Look, heavens, I thought I had another monster. No one bought that. My parents decided contacts would be more practical for an active girl like me, and they were right as usual. So what can we learn from all of these things, darlings? Well, sleepovers are potentially fraught with danger, and life is full of surprises, but you can always count on your friends and family to help you out when you don't see things clearly. And by seeing things clearly, I mean I see that pile of leaves. I see it's not a monster, so no reason to attack. But where's the fun in that, darlings? Attack! The end. <laughs> I like these glasses she has on the back. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. Miss Mabel is goofy, and she definitely needed some glasses, right? Okay. Well... I have one more story about glasses for you. And this is brand newbie Scooby Dooby. This is called Mr. Posey's New Glasses. And this is written by Ted Couser and illustrated by Daniel Duncan. And I forgot to tell you that this lovely Naughty Mabel book is by the creators Nathan Lane and Devlin Elliott. All right. So... 
Let's get into Mr. Posey. Mr. Posey was tired of his old glasses. When he put them on, everything looked dull and boring. There sat his table under the same old kitchen window and on it his same old cup and spoon and newspaper. When he bent over the paper to read it, nothing in it was new. On the front was the same old picture of the mayor shaking the same old somebody's hand. On the sports page, there was the same high school track star dashing across the finish line with his arms in the air. Even the picture of the beef roast in the grocery store advertisement looked like it was the same old roast that it had always been. No matter where he looked, everything seemed blurred and dull. Beyond his window was his same old backyard, and beyond the hedge was Mrs. Bloomer's same old laundry drying on her same old clothesline. Mr. Posey's friend Andy was throwing a stick for Mrs. Bloomer's dog Parker, and Parker was barking at Andy. To Andy and Parker, nothing was every, ever dull. Every day seemed interesting. But no matter where Mr. Posey looked, everything was the same as it had been forever. He wanted to look at the world with excitement to see it the way Andy saw it. Today might just be the day to get new glasses. New glasses might fix everything. And since Andy was always looking for something new to do, Mr. Posey went outside and called across the hedge. Andy, want to help me buy new glasses? Sure, said Andy, and he dropped the stick. Can Parker come along? Well, I guess so, said Mr. Posey. Mr. Posey bought all his clothes at the Cheer Up thrift shop. He bought his same old shoes. He bought his same old socks. All the shirts he bought looked just the same because they were the same exactly. When he opened the door, the same little bell jingled once to alert the clerk, the same skinny man who was always going through cardboard boxes at the back of the shop, that he had a customer. The shop smelled the same as it always smelled, like rose petals that somebody had kept in an old shoe. And when Mr. Posey and Andy walked around, the floor creaked exactly the way it had always creaked. In the middle of the shop was a cardboard barrel, and it was full of glasses. Mr. Posey plunged his hand in and stirred the glasses around and fished out a pair that had big stars for frames. Blue plastic stars with imitation diamonds all along the temples. He put his old glasses in his shirt pocket where he always put them and put on the new glasses, fitting the tips over his ears. And he wept, when he looked through the lenses, all he could see was a night sky. Oh my goodness. He saw the Big Dipper. He saw the Little Dipper. He saw the horizon. He saw a plane with one light blinking so far above him that he couldn't hear the whoosh. A shooting star shot through the corner of one lens. Somewhere in the darkness, an owl was hoo-hooing very faintly. These glasses are really new, thought Mr. Posey, but they make the world much too dark. If I bought them, I wouldn't be able to see my cup on the table or read my newspaper or look out the window and see my friend Andy throwing a stick for Parker. So he took them off and he put them back, but Andy pulled them out again and put them on. Wow, cool, he said, instant midnight. Andy dropped the glasses into the barrel and pulled out a different pair. How about these, he asked, handing them to Mr. Posey. The plastic flame frames were stripy brown and tan and looked as if they'd been cut from the shell of a turtle and then carefully polished. A pair of glasses like that would surely not be the same old thing, Mr. Posey thought, and so he tried them on. Andy watched with interest. In an instant, Mr. Posey felt cold and wet as if he were in deep water, and he sucked his breath and he held it in. Oh my goodness, look at this. What? An enormous gray fish with big yellow eyes and a bent fish hook in its lower lip came slowly swimming toward him, looking very hungry. And in both lenses, he could see the shapes of other fish, even bigger than the first, now slowly turning and swimming in his direction. And then he saw a huge tentacle reaching toward him and its suckers were opening and closing. Oh my goodness. He snatched off the glasses and threw them back in the barrel and all the fish and the tentacle vanished. Mr. Posey took a deep breath of the familiar cheer up thrift shop air with its rose petal old shoe smell. He wouldn't try on those glasses again ever. Let me try those, said Andy. And he picked them out of the barrel and put them on. 
Wow, he said, this is like the deep sea diver, but you don't have to breathe through the tube. <coughs> Let's see what else is in there. Andy reached way down in the barrel and scrabbled around and pulled out another pair, a pair with big, perfectly round lenses, and handed them to Mr. Posey. They look safe enough, but when Mr. Posey put them on, oh my gosh, what do you think is going to happen this time? <gasps> the world began to swirl. Oh no, like water going down a drain. The Cheer Up thrift shop with its used shirts and house dresses and pots and pans and books and pictures whirled around him faster and faster, and the clerk unpacking boxes sped past him again and again. Mr. Posey felt as if he was going to be sick, and to keep his balance, he held onto the rim of the cardboard barrel. Quickly, he snatched off the glasses and handed them to Andy, who put them on and immediately began to get dizzy, too. Andy flung the glasses back in the barrel. Those are really awful, he said, but everything was slowing to a stop, and the shop was pretty much the same as it had been before. Mr. Posey felt very much relieved, and so did Andy, who wandered away to see what else he could find that might be fun. Getting new glasses was becoming more and more scary, and Mr. Posey was already tired. He was starting to be afraid even to touch any of the glasses in the barrel. There was a bucket of rulers nearby. He picked one out, leaned over the barrel, and used the roller to stir through the glasses. Beneath the star glasses and the turtle shell glasses and the perfectly round ones, Mr. Posey found a pair whose lenses were shaped like the eyes of a cat. Hmm. He carefully lifted them out with the ruler so as not to avoid touching them with any others. Then he put them on. What do you think of those? What's going to happen? <gasps> Suddenly, oh my goodness gracious, he could hear dogs barking, not little dogs like Parker, but big dogs with barks that came from deep inside their stomachs. And the barks were quickly turning into terrible growls and coming closer. Suddenly, he could see dogs racing toward him from every direction. Their fangs, oh my gosh. Oh, they had such big fangs. Quickly, he snatched those glasses off and the barking died away and the dogs were gone. He was glad that Andy hadn't tried them on but he wasn't ready to give up on finding new glasses. With the ruler, he fished out a pair of wire-rimmed glasses with lenses too scratched to see through. Oh no, that's not gonna work. And then he tried a pair of reading glasses, but with them on, he couldn't do anything but read. And there were other things that he wanted to see and he wanted to do. And there was a pair of pink lenses that made everything pink, but who would wanna wear that? Mr. Posey was getting discouraged. He put his old glasses on side and looked around. Andy came walking up carrying something. Could you buy this for me, he asked Mr. Posey. I'd be happy to, Andy, he said, but I can't quite see what it is that you want. It's no wonder, Andy said with a smile. Your glasses are so dirty, it looks as if a dog like Parker's been licking them. Dirty, said Mr. Posey. Filthy, said Andy, icky and yucky. Mr. Posey pulled his handkerchief out of his pocket and he wiped his lenses. And then he looked around. Oh, oh my goodness. The racks of clothing looked the same, but the colors of the shirts and the blouses was brighter. The buckets of rulers still look like buckets of rulers, but now they look like somebody somebody would like to pick up and have fun with. Mr. Posey was greatly relieved. His old glasses were fine and they'd just been dirty. He took them off, wiped them again, and put them back on. Then he looked at what Andy was holding, a wheel with a pedals on either side, like one from a tricycle. What do you want that for? I don't know yet, said Andy, but I'm going to think of something. Together, they walked to the front of the store, where the clerk was now waiting at the cash register. How much for the wheel, Mr. Posey asked. How about a quarter, said the clerk. Do you need any new pants? I'll sell you a pair for another quarter. No, but thank you anyway, said Mr. Posey. I'll bet my old pants will look better now. Why's that? asked the clerk. Oh, never mind, said Mr. Posey, smiling at Andy. And Andy smiled back. So Andy left with his wheel, and Mr. Posey, with his clean glasses, left the cheer up thrift shop, and they strolled toward home. Mr. Posey felt kind of fancy, uh, bouncy, it felt really good to see things in a way he never had before. Now and then they stopped, and Mr. Posey slowly turned all the way around so that he could see everything. Though his street looked pretty much the same, it also looked a little different, a little newer. The houses of his neighbors in their front yards with their rose bushes looked pretty much the same, but cleaner and neater. Andy was the same too, but he looked happy to be carrying a wheel he'd never carried before. And now and then he'd put it down and pedal it along using his hands. 
and as they passed Mrs. Bloomer's house, Mr. Posey could see her same old laundry hanging in the side yard, and Parker started barking and barking. Even though these things looked the same, somehow the world seemed brighter than before, and it was different, and it was exciting. The end. Well, I hope you liked that story time about glasses, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye!